Hi there, I'm your host Macaulay Tucker and you're listening to The Macaulay Tucker Show, the podcast where I sit down with some of the most accomplished and fascinating individuals in the entertainment and business industry. From celebrities to industry leaders, our guests offer unique perspectives and inspiring stories that will educate and inform you. Join me as I sit down with my next guest to cover their humble beginnings, challenges they faced, as well as their accomplishments in life. You are bound to learn something new, so sit back and enjoy the interview. In this episode of the Macaulay Tucker Show, we've got a very special guest, Ruby. Ruby had the opportunity to play Sophie in the Disney film The BFG, which is directed by Steven Spielberg. She's also been in numerous other projects, and basically in this interview, we're just going to sit down to learn more about her life and uh, what it was like to be involved in so many wonderful projects that we know and love today. So sit back and enjoy the interview. You live. And so I kind of like want to start at the beginning, you know, I guess entertainment, acting, whether what that be, yes. whatever that looked like, I kind of want to hear how you got started. I know your father is an actor and he's been doing it for, for many years, I think since even like yeah. 1990s. And so it, it's, I, I understand that it's been part of your family for, for quite a while. Mm-hmm. But for you, why was this something that you're passionate about? What kind of started this, the seed that kind of grew into this tree? Yeah, totally. Thank you. First of all, I just want to say it's amazing to mm-hmm. be here. So thank you so much for reaching out. And, um, yeah, I, so I think for me, it obviously watching my dad act in the theatre growing up uh, was a really big part of my life. I found mm-hmm. it really inspiring. I don't think I thought super deeply about it at the time, but um, I think, you know, maybe it's a bit of a genetic thing. Me and my dad are both both really into acting, both really into um, entertainment in general. And um, yeah, so I think I sort of inherited that slight spark from him. And I think a big part of it for me, um, I have quite a strong imagination and I've always had a very strong imagination. And I think the idea of acting and pretending to kind of be somebody else was quite appealing to me when I was younger. And so, yeah, I have a very distinct memory of asking my mum when I was about seven if I could join uh, our local kind of drama group. And then since then, I realised that I I really um, I liked entertaining people basically I guess is, is the bottom line so yeah it was kind of a multitude of, of things really mm-hmm. and it's really cool to see that you were able to kind of go down this road and, and go through something that is quite challenging again I've spoken yeah. with a few people who like one one of my guests he was involved in a Disney project it was uh Mars Needs Moms it was sort of oh. sort of a flop but he he did the kid and he told me how yeah. difficult it was for school and kind of going through it well in school it, it's quite challenging and I and I've learned that mm-hmm. through a lot of these conversations but it's really really I'm really happy that you were able to kind of go through these challenges and kind of stay strong through that one of your your first projects um I don't don't really know the order but I know you probably were able to do some commercials and theater stuff but of course kind of mm-hmm. going like legit right straight into like the meat of the conversation you know BFG I, I grew up watching that as a kid and it was really great film yeah. I, I quite enjoy I I feel like it's it's underrated underappreciated it's a very beautiful film and through my research yeah. it was actually Steven's uh first time creating a full-length Disney film it also was in development for like 25 years which is crazy it's been yeah. a, it was in development for a long time and so like, it, it's yeah. so crazy and like um I would love to hear you you're you know like this must have been a really awesome experience um I mm. would love to hear you know about how this kind of all unfolded, kind of like right where it began. Um, initially, I learned that you got this part, your parents were wanting to teach you about rejection and you actually got the part <laughs> through that. So I wanna hear, I wanna hear yeah. about that. Yeah, so basically how, how it kind of started was I, so initially I decided uh, after quite a few long chats with my mom and dad um, that I wanted to, dive into acting or um you know professional acting and I essentially spoke to my dad's agent and just said uh, and we had discussions with them about it and they said let's just give it a go see if she likes it and my mum and dad were understandably a little bit hesitant because I Mm -hmm. think the the acting industry can be quite brutal especially for, for kids it can dealing with rejection and things like that can be can be quite difficult Um, And I went for my first audition, which was for a a show called Four O'Clock Club. Um, uh, Used to be on CBBC, a very big kids channel here in the UK. And I went for that audition and I got the audition. I got the part, which I don't think necessarily I was 
certainly wasn't expecting it. And I don't think my parents were expecting it because it was my first experience ever um, mm -hmm. at an audition. And that was a really wonderful opportunity. It taught me a lot. And I think the fact that I had done that, ex had that experience um, really helped me throughout my BFG auditioning process. And, you know, the fact that I'd been in front of a camera before, the fact that I'd been on sets before. And so, yeah, I, I got the audition through for BFG um, after doing a couple of seasons of that show and it you know I went for it um it was you know it's so much a right place right time thing I feel like mm -hmm. with with acting as well I it, you know um like you said it was in development for so long and then it kind of came out of the woodwork and it was such an exciting opportunity so I went for it I I did about I think I did about five auditions over a process of you know months um you know like usual mm -hmm. uh and yeah and then I, I found out I got the part uh I was completely thrilled it was in it was absolutely insane because it, it it was in like you say it was a little bit of a somewhat of a challenge for mm -hmm. me and my family because we had to move to Canada for four months to do the filming which was kind of insane <laughs> um and you know uh, uh yeah and lived there and kind of you know uh, which was amazing I mean what an incredible experience um but yeah so that's kind of how it all all kicked off really mm -hmm. and it's really cool to hear that breakdown just kind of hear how everything worked out and of course with every project you're in you, you just you have a you have a lot of fun but you also learn and grow as an actor even like the smallest of projects and so this this is a big a big film and just being involved with that must have been like wow it must take a while to process and you're like this is this is crazy you know yeah. it's been out for a long time when I was sharing that I was going to have you on the show I was so shocked that I had like a bunch of my my friends were like oh I I grew up watching this this is this is my this is going to be really exciting yeah. and i'm like that's it's so i'm so happy to see the impact of it and i was not i was so surprised mm -hmm. the impact of that fit the film that you were involved in and i'm curious this is kind of like a question that i wanted you to kind of share your insights to people uh who may, might want to be actors you know in this environment it can it can be very stressful so i wanted to hear you know what sort of uh if if you did what sort of strategies did you use to kind of you know relieve the stress be at peace you know uh what sort of things yeah. do you recommend to people even if they're not acting but doing other hard things like working and things like that yeah totally um no i think that that's a really really good point it you know, it it was a a completely wonderful experience, but at the same time, you know, I was I was eleven, I was still mm -hmm. going through school. It was, I think, well, I was, yeah, ten, eleven, and it, you know, it it was a uh, it was challenging at the same time. So I I think I would say my uh, number one uh, piece of advice probably would be to keep yourself grounded with friends and family. So mm -hmm. my my biggest kind of uh, thing at that time that I would say really kind of helped me out if things were getting a little bit challenging was you know, going home, spending time with my family and going outside, doing, you know, seeing Canada, seeing Vancouver, you know, just kind of um, giving my head and my body a little bit of a break, you know, mm -hmm. keeping them separate, you know, not obviously I had to rehearse my lines and everything and, and um, in my own climate, of course, but it, that was really, really important to me, you know, playing with my little sister mm -hmm. and, having fun watching movies all together kind of you know keeping those those uh that family time was really really sacred for me definitely mm -hmm. and that's definitely very important I feel like people need to remember that make sure you know you're healthy you're all right and that I've experienced similar situations with the show making mm -hmm. sure okay every single Friday release something edit something you know I have no team yeah. so it's, it's very stressful throughout high school and and you just you, you get burned out and you have to stop and it, it you kind of like learn from it you have to you know, you have to give yourself work that you can actually work with and deal with. Um, this is this is a very 100%. fun conver conversation because you um you're one of the first. I think you might be the first person I have I am having on who's worked uh, on being directed by Steven. I've had somebody who was done uh, who was on The Dark Knight that was directed by oh my gosh yeah for Nolan. But Steven Spielberg, yeah. amazing director. And so I mean, oh. you were younger, but you still probably remember uh, many of the things that happened. And I just love to you know get an insight. What's it like? What's what's the whole experience like working? under Steven Spielberg is it is it as beautiful as everyone says it is uh first of all yes it is as beautiful as everyone says it is he is such a wonderful kind-hearted generous person and he was so patient with me he was so kind with me he he really let my imagination run wild he you know I I never felt like I was kind of working if that meant you know as a kid mm -hmm. I, I and so many people say this about him is that he's so great with with working with kids and I think that 
um i think that that really rings true because it i never felt like i was you know on the job like i i felt i was having fun he always made an effort to make things feel low pressure for me he you know it it was he was really really amazing and i mean he he's just amazing a visionary his vision was so strong the whole time like honestly I'm sat here stuttering because there's like 50,000 like things running through my head that I can mm-hmm. say about him because he yeah he he's amazing and and so kind so yeah mm-hmm. it was an, an incredible experience to get to work with him of course absolutely and every, every director has a different approach and it's always cool to kind of yeah. see uh, each work environment meet new people even see people that you met before and so it's it's awesome that you had that opportunity i, I recently was lucky enough because in a city london ontario they were shooting a film and they looked for extras and so i was finally able to to kind of experience what? somewhat of like what the hollywood world is like and it's just so cool yeah. to see the directing and you know things repeating you have to be very patient in those environments and you you learn a lot again you learn a lot uh from these films and kind of you know with this wrapping up this specific subject you know looking Mm -hmm. back what do you believe was the most significant way you contributed to the betrayal of your character and the overall essence of the story and how do you approach the responsibility of bringing a character like your character that you played to life in this film uh like i kind of um mentioned before the right place right time thing i think for me the reason so Sophie as a character mm. was sort of essentially just me. Mm-hmm. I was I was kind of, it, it wasn't really a huge stretch for me to, you know, by much of the imagination for me to play that character. I think it, um, you know, I, I think I would, I would rehearse my lines and I would do all this stuff, but really it was just me speaking the lines. Does that make sense? Yeah. It was kind of, because uh, I think because I was quite young as well, I wasn't necessarily putting a lot of thought into it you know like you know thinking really deep into Sophie's mindset and of course she she um you know she's an orphan she's had a very diff- had a very different um growing up experience to me a- as a character but I think you know it was right place right time that character was just um the you know I fit her mm-hmm. perfectly she was kind of my um just me as a as a person, you know, I what I've not watched the film in a little while now, but when I do watch it, I I very much do just kind of see me as a kid mm-hmm. on screen, you know, say, speaking these words, saying these lines. It's it's kind of yeah. I don't I don't think I was thinking too deep into it at the time, mm-hmm. if that makes any sense. Yeah, I thought that was quite rambly, but <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. And the best characters are the ones that are more like you. Like when you you become yeah. the character, and it, and it really exactly. and those are the best because you watch it and you're like, wow, that really stood out to me. That performance, it felt very mm-hmm. authentic. It's very unique. And you know, after this project or during this project, you were gone. To, you were able to go into a bunch of other things. You mentioned the show earlier. You were a reoccurring mm-hmm. character, and so that also is a great way to learn, but also meet other young actors and just grow as an actor overall. And so you also, what stood out to me is the past a uh, while back, you did two films, which were kind of, I think, English dubbing, which is kind of a, a whole yes. other realm, which is like, wow, it's a whole other realm. And I've spoken with people that have done like uh, ADR, whatever those things are called, we record mm-hmm. all those sounds. So it's a whole other realm. Some said, oh, it's so easy. You just go and record it. So I'm like, oh no, it's so challenging. Um, And yeah. some really good film. And I just discovered through research that uh, Bella Ramsey was involved in that one that you were uh, in. Uh, yeah. Was, yeah. And so that I'm like, oh, like she, she's, you know, under the spotlight now. So it's kind of cool to see all these cool connections. But, you know, just kind of covering this era of your time after the film, uh, what were some of the highlights? What have you learned uh, through that experience, those experiences? Yeah, so that both of those films were incredibly cool experiences. Um, Mary and the Witch's Flower, which I, that was an English dub, like you said. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was Studio Ponock's uh, first feature movie that was an amazing experience I grew up watching Studio Ghibli films Mm -hmm. you know My Neighbor Totoro, Spirited Away all those incredible uh animation animations and um so as soon as I I got the chance you know I completely jumped at the chance to get to do a film similar to those obviously Studio Ponoc is is a different studio Mm -hmm. but um it was it was an amazing opportunity that I was so so excited by and that was that was an interesting experience because obviously it, it was an English dub mm-hmm. and um, matching my English lines to the uh, Japanese mouth movements was definitely a um, interesting experience. It, it was a little bit challenging. I think the more I did it, um, the more I got used to it. I think it was one of those things, you know, practice makes perfect. Um, mm-hmm. 
but that that was an amazing experience um and yeah and then the other the other film I did which was for younger audiences mm-hmm. was uh Princess Emmy and her horses and that's the one like you say that I, I yeah. did with Bella Ramsey and we didn't actually meet but yeah. we were you know we are <laughs> yeah. in it together I guess um and yeah that that was also an interesting experience again um that was uh German I believe was the original yeah um was was how the movie was originally done and so that again was an English dub which by mm-hmm. that time I'd had a little bit more practice because I'd done Mary and the Witch's Flower already and so I I had um yeah I was a a little bit um it came to me a little bit easier I think the the dubbing Mm -hmm. with that one um but yeah no it's it you're totally right it is kind of a very different world the whole um English dubbing thing I think that was an interesting first you know voiceover experience for me to have you know um yeah they were great that's awesome. I know after this, you you got into do you got, you're able to grow in your skills and other things like presentation. Mm. You know, you did voiceover things like that, even judging and other things. And you know, yeah. since 2019, you you somewhat kind of stepped out of the the limelight and you've gone to experience some other things. And this is kind of well, I don't know why, but I was eager to ask you this. I I know right now, uh, you're doing um I saw that you're doing children's animation commissioning apprentice. I'm not sure how mm. old that is, but you, I guess you did that. But what what does that look like? You know, what's what has life looked like for you? Uh, since 2019 and uh what are the plans i guess for the future yeah thank you um yeah so i i decided um to take a bit of a step back from from acting um mostly uh there were a few different reasons but mostly because i have all my heart has always um kind of lay behind the scenes uh, mm-hmm. in production and i i obviously have been lucky enough to have some amazing acting experiences um which you know I mean Mm -hmm. I've learned so so much from those experiences and I carry those kind of teachings with me every day in my job and um yeah but I that was kind of the main reason is I just decided that I was a lot more interested in production and um another thing was I was kind of going you know I was in the middle of high school I was you know enjoying hanging out with my friends and studying and it was a lot to have to balance um Mm -hmm everything at once and so yeah I thought it would be best if I took a little bit of a of a step back and at the moment I'm yeah I'm very very passionate about animation okay um and you know movie movie making in general but but animation has always had a really special place in my heart and I don't necessarily want to be an animator because uh I'm not sure how well that would go for Mm -hmm. me I can't really draw I'm not particularly technical but um, I, I do really, really love animation and, you know, the idea of, of, of directing animation or writing for animation really, really appeals to me. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, I, I decided after leaving college that um, it, it might be a good fit for me to kind of go into an, an apprenticeship role that uh, mostly focused on animation. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. And I'm really, really enjoying it. I've learned so, so much. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of what's going on at the minute. That's awesome. And, you know, it's great that you're able to kind of step back. And, you know, I, I always wanted to be like a director when I was a kid and like, you know, coming yeah. with characters and stuff. But it's, it's I've always like it's so challenging. So I'm like, you know, I want to take a different approach. But I still, you know, I still think about it right now. I'm actually trying to I'm trying to write a book. I, I don't think I'll ever. I've always said I wanted to. And then I want to do an yeah. audio drama. Like I, I love like comedy kind of like, you know, young adult stuff. And so, you know, it's yeah. really cool to see that you're able to kind of do something that you actually like you love and really appreciate and you know this is a really really deep question but you know with your whole life that you've lived you know what's something in your life like that you're especially grateful for and and what makes it so meaningful to you wow I think I think literally and I feel like this is a little bit of a cliche and I know that a lot of people say this but I think the first thing that came to my head when you said that is my family is Mm -hmm. my mom my dad and my sister and and all of my wider family I think that I wouldn't have um you know how supportive my family have have been um all my life has meant so so much to me and I'm continuously very very grateful for that because I think given the experiences I've had the fact that my parents were always on my side always looking out for me always really supporting me and helping me achieve what I wanted to achieve but also totally respecting when I needed to take a step back and I wanted to you know um pursue other things and that that has really really meant a lot to me and um so yeah all my family my wonderful friends as well of course I think <laughs> yeah like I say, a little bit of a cliche but I think yeah. yeah that's definitely something that I I'm always um thank you my lucky stars that I have such such a great support system around me 
Mm -hmm. And it's always good to remember and look back to the people that, you know, that support you. And I mean, I have, you don't see yeah. it. But I've got this board up here where I've decided to put like, you know, friends and family's names on and oh, just kind of wow. like reaching out to them and stuff, you know, just trying to, I you know, prioritize that. that. And it's, it's always good. You know, I haven't done it in a while, but, you know, just checking in and just, you know, going yeah. to those people that really support you. Um, Kind of another, another deep question. I've actually asked this before to some younger people and it really, they're like, oh, this is a good question. You know, like if you had the chance, you know, you're doing, you want to do all these crazy things. And know when you were younger, you dreamt about being a director and ex trying new things. If you had the opportunity, you know, just to do only one more project, whether it be any type of art, music, book, film, what would you want that project to look like? You know, it's the last project you'll you'll do forever. What would you want that project to look like, and why? Oh wow! I think I think right now, at this point in my life, my my dream opportunity uh, would be to get the chance to um, direct an animated movie, or you okay. know, kind of direct a movie in general. That would be that would be pretty cool. But you know, um, direct direct um, an animated movie that really speaks to people that. Uh, really yeah that, that that really kind of um that really speaks to people that feels personal that that um you know that I that I pour a lot of my heart into mm. and yeah that that means a lot to people I think that that's kind of my goal in mm. life I feel like is you know career-wise anyway is is to um create something that makes people feel uh less alone and 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 you know kind of connected and um yeah I think that movies have uh an amazing power to do that and so mm -hmm. yeah I think that that would have to be my answer that's a, absolutely yeah impacting is very very important that's why I appreciate talking to people because you're able to pass yeah. knowledge through conversations and you know I always ask uh my guests at the end is what would they like to pass on to the listeners that they believe you know will impact and uh, help their everyday life I think my uh I, th I think I would say uh give yourself a break don't be too self-critical. That that's something that I've I've struggled with over over the past uh, past few years of my life. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, overthinking, being quite self-critical. And I think that something that I've really learned is it's so so important to give your brain a rest, give your mind a rest. Don't listen to every thought just because you have a thought doesn't mean it's true. Doesn't mean you have to believe it. Um, you know who you are in your soul and and kind of wow that got deep but you know what I mean? <laughs> you you know who you are in your soul carry that with you and stay true to yourself and uh, yeah give give yourself a break give yourself a pat on the back and don't yeah don't be too self-critical 